to be funny and dramatic. <laughs> it gave me some drama to pass on to you. is aka GK Fralin, a friendly community, and I am Glenda. So, no calamities. Hopefully none to come. <laughs> I don't know if you could call yesterday a calamity. It was certainly a, I don't know. It was certainly frustrating and befuddling and dramatic. <laughs> it gave me some drama to pass on to you. I figured out once I was putting this whole thing together, I jumped around all over the place, <laughs> one topic to another. And I did some editing and so took some stuff out that I didn't think I really wanted in there. And then it really seemed to go from just nothing, one thing to another subject without anything in between. So I will put some little things in here and say what, <laughs> I guess I'll just announce what's coming next. Okay, this section is about me complaining about my eczema. Enjoy, whether you like it or not. <laughs> eczema of all things. Really? Anyway, my eczema was just about cleared up on like my elbows. If that is eczema, I, I'm beginning to think it is because I had it down to where it was, you know, I used to think it was all just callus and I have been rubbing lotion into it for, into them for ages and Finally, they were getting really, I had tried the um, filing or, you know, the, you know, the emery board or the, you know, the thing to file them down. And I'm sitting here scratching at it right now. Anyway, it just burned. You know, it was like, it, it got the... Um, the callus part, you know, there was some, some really dead dry skin there. But it didn't go very far. It started to kind of burn like a rug burn or something, or like filing too deep. So I quit doing that. <laughs> and I started putting lotion on, you know. And they get itchy, and I sit there and I scratch at them. And, you know, some dead skin will flake off sometimes, which kind of is part of eczema. You know, they get that scaly stuff. It gets, it's not, a, it's not contagious. It's hereditary. So if you see somebody who's got a little patch like this, you know, probably not anything that you need to worry about. Because it doesn't even look like a rash. It, it looks like a patch. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, this was all, you know, red and itchy too again and and just you know I'd scratch it and little flakes would so am I grossing you out yet <laughs> so anyway I'm back to putting hydrocortisone cream on all of it <laughs> okay this next section is about how some people have been acting like jugheads And my dad used to use the word jughead quite liberally when it came to certain things. I don't want to give you too much of a spoiler, but I do want to give you this, and it just, just made me laugh. I went to get the definition. There is a military definition for jarhead, but no, this is jughead. Dad was in the Air Force, so I don't know if you ever had anyone called him a junk. <laughs> yeah, drill sergeants always have him. Anyway, this is the definition it gave. A jughead. 
The definition of a jughead is slang for a foolish or stupid person. A person who drives a car without insurance is an example of a jughead. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I know I'm not a favor in, I'm not in favor of calling people stupid. People do stupid things, but um, that is a very funny definition, considering what you're going to hear in this next clip. I put a I put a little short video of me yesterday on Facebook, and I was like, like my dad used to say, you jug heads. But I mean, I I was meaning it. It was like you know, quit your dang hating, because it'll all come back to you, you know. And it does in the long run. Anyway, didn't really get any replies except my sister liked it. I don't think I got any other. I might have, but not last time I checked. Might might be now. But my sister shared it. It's like all right. She remembers her dad saying that. <laughs> I'm sure she agrees too. But <laughs> probably she remembers that saying jughead. But the thing, the funny part of it is, he didn't usually call people jugheads. The jugheads were the cows, and the horses, and the hogs. <laughs> I hear Dad now. He's out there, some stubborn animal. You blankety blank jughead. <laughs> Most of the time, it was a cow or a pig. The cows more because they just don't get it. People say they're people. Some people think they're pretty smart, and they probably are in their own way. But man, they can be jugheads too. <laughs> and pigs, oh, I mean, they can be cute little critters when they're babies. And I know there's the pot billy pig pet thing, you know, and they pr pr practically train them like a dog, so you know. The hogs that you raise as livestock and they're all out there and fenced together, I swear to gosh, they work like an ant community. <laughs> they don't, but they are some stubborn animals. I think I've talked before about how if you're going to work with hogs and try to move them, you definitely do want a board. It's 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 a board that is oh so wide. You know, I mean, you carry it so it's you know. Anyway, and it's got either one or two um, places cut out for your hands, usually one. But you know, if a hog starts, if a hog gets mad, especially a sow with pigs with babies and you want to move the babies into the warm or into the farrowing shed and you have to get the mom away from them first because she's not going to leave them not voluntarily so if you can get a, a sow into a hog barn without her babies more power to you I'm sure it can be done if you got enough people <laughs> Anyway, but then you got to get those baby pigs and you got to get them into the farrowing barn and then get the mother in there. Now you have two separate, two separate stalls connected. Think of a, a think of adjoining rooms that are made out of out of like pipe, you know, um, for the pens, but you know, that fencing pipe or, you know, the fences, but they're, you know, anyway, and on one side, the little baby pigs can scoot under and go eat when mama hog lays down to nurse or when she stands up because they will lay on their babies and they will suffocate them. Just to specify something on that last clip. Generally, you do try to get the sow in the furrowing barn before she has the babies. But sometimes 
you don't get to. <laughs> you know, it's like babies make the decisions a lot of the time, just like with humans. Anyway, this next bit. I told you I'm all over the board today with topics. Oh, this next section is about photographs. <laughs> about how we keep our photographs and how we get them. We can still print, I don't know. It's about photog about photographs more than anything. <laughs> more than it is about good photography. Enjoy. <laughs> A lot of people do still get the printed pictures. I like the printed pictures. I mean, I don't always have them, but I like having, you know, a lot of them printed. Although my parents, <laughs> I swear they took pictures of every rock and corner. No, I'm kidding, not that much. But they, they take a lot. They used, used to take a lot of pictures on trips and stuff. Dad loved to take pictures of scenery and, um, you know, interesting things. Not that they didn't take pictures of us kids, they did. But um, did a lot of, they, they did some traveling after we left, you know. <laughs> but Dad used to like to just go up in the pasture. And he, he there's one, I think we've got an album, or album, a, a calendar cover out of it. But he stood up on top of the hill in the pasture and looked down to the east over the farm. And, um, I mean, from up there, you can catch the farm and the river behind it and everything. It, it, you know, it's, of course, it means more to us than just about anybody else. <laughs> but um, that's what a lot of them do. But there are a lot of pictures, and I've got a lot of them in my, I got a little, one of those, cubes that you open, you know, used to buy those in, well, Kmart, I guess, at one time. But anyway, and uh, it's just loaded with pictures and stuff. And I've got albums full of pictures. That, the one thing about the albums, at least they're sorted. The ones in, <laughs> ones in that silly cube, I mean, it's a good size, you know, it's a storage cube. And I've got, uh, I can't really fault my parents. They did, t uh, they did put things in better order than I did, <laughs> come to think of it. Because mom always had them kind of like in a file. You know, they'd be in a, in a shoe box, but she'd have these little dividers in there for like how she had them filed. Or else she'd keep them in there little envelope that they came from the developer in. But you can still send pictures in. from your computer. Excuse me. Even your phone. You can still send them in and get print. Which is cool. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> don't talk too long about practically nothing. Uh, it's been a it's been a good day. I, I got that. I took that necklace apart yesterday, and I did a row of beads. And then I decided today I didn't like the way I did that row of beads, so I did a completely different. Well, not, but I did a different, a smaller, more dainty setup than what I had because I had things that were way too big for a little girl. But anyway. So I guess I can say good night. <laughs> Cause I know I'm overtime, probably. No, I know I'm. Have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Hasta mañana. I need a song. You remember Rump Room? Somebody mentioned that here on a, not too long ago. But the little thing. I should go blooper, 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 boo. It's all about bloopers with you. <laughs>